Hello and welcome to this video. In this tutorial, I wanted to walk you through how I embroidered this simple butterfly on the back pocket of some cutoff shorts that I have. I have a full list of all the materials I used in the blog post that I will link below and I'm just gonna kind of hop right into the tutorial. So this isn't always necessary, but I like to remove the pocket because I think it's really annoying to have to embroider on a pocket. It's just really hard to get in where you need to get in. So I'm using a seam ripper and I'm just removing the stitches from the pocket and I find it easiest to do that from the very inside of the pocket. Then you'll just want to remove some of the excess thread that's left over. I'm using stick and stitch water soluble stabilizer. You can use um, regular fabric markers, but I find it kind of hard to do just because you can't see through denim. So I think this is an easier method and it just washes away in the end. Then all you have to do is cut it out and then you can place it wherever you want to stitch. I prefer to use these flexi hoops. They're just plastic hoops that stretch over top of an inner ring. And I think that they are easier to keep in place and also place on the fabric. As you can see, it's kind of a struggle to get it on just because I am working near the seam lines, but I think that it stays a lot easier. Like I didn't have any trouble with it slipping around. I think wood hoops are a little bit too hard to use on denim. So beginning the tutorial, I am just going to split stitch around the outline of the butterfly wings. I find this to kind of give me a guideline and it makes your edges of your stitches way neater. I wanted to show you a handy way to tie off some of these stitches. You can sometimes just tie two tails together. Um, you really want to secure stuff tightly when you're embroidering on clothing, obviously, because you're going to be washing it and moving around in it. So you definitely don't want to just be tucking them underneath of other stitches. So a way besides just tying together two ends, if you don't have another end, like in this instance, what I like to do is go underneath near where I just ended my stitch and I'll just take the needle off and kind of keep a loop right here. And then I will basically take this loop and tuck the tail in and grab it and make another loop. And then I will grab it again and it will form a knot. And I found that this is like very tight and it doesn't fall out. So I like doing that when I don't have another tail to tie and honestly, I kind of feel like it might be even more secure than tying two ends together. I don't know why, but I think it does kind of help. So hopefully that is helpful. Then I did kind of a combination of satin stitches and long and short stitches to fill in the black areas of the wing. So before I get started on the next part, which I'm going to go ahead and start filling in the wings with the color, uh, I like to have an embroidery sharpener on hand. I just have one on my needle pin cushion here, couldn't remember the word. <laughs> and you basically just poke it through. And it has these little, I think, kind of sand or gravel in it, and it makes your needle sharper. And you, you want to go all the way through just so that your needle is getting sharpened this way. At least I think it does make a difference if you put it all the way through. And then I can definitely tell that this is sharper now. So basically once you do that, I think it also kind of gets some of the adhesive off of the needle because that is my one complaint about this water soluble 
uh, stabilizer is that it is a little sticky because it has adhesive on it. So you definitely want to keep your hands dry and also just sharpening it or wiping your needle off with like a dry cloth will help that. That's like the one downside of using it, but I do think it's more convenient than having to struggle and make a design from scratch, you know, without having like kind of a rough draft. So that is just a little tip. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get started on filling in the wings and I'm gonna be using a long and short stitch. I'm gonna use a dark orange and I'm just gonna fill in half of each of the wings with that color and they'll be like towards the center. I'll be filling that in. And I can already tell such a difference in the way my needle's going through. It was getting really hard to poke it through and now it's like way simpler. So that's cool. Then I'm going in with the lighter yellow color for the edges of those inner portions of the wing. And I'm just kind of overlapping those stitches into the orange to kind of blend them together. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other side and then we'll be done. Actually, just kidding, we have to do the middle still too, but that'll be pretty simple. I forgot to film the part where I put the white spots in the wings, but I just simply made like straight stitches along the wings to add the little white spots in. And now I'm going in with a split stitch to go ahead and do the middle part of the butterfly. After this, I just ran the embroidery underwater and kind of rubbed the stabilizer off. And once I got it all off, I allowed it to air dry for a few hours. And now I'm going to attach the pocket back on. I prefer to use a couple of sewing pins just to make sure that I keep the pocket in place while I'm stitching. And then I'm using my sewing machine, which is just a basic sewing machine, but I am using a denim needle. You definitely cannot use a regular needle for this just because of how thick the denim is. I even had a little bit of trouble with this and didn't stitch it as well as I wish I could have around the corners to kind of reinforce the pockets. But yeah, I just went ahead and sewed with a matching thread color and then here's how it turned out. 